Hi there, it's Polly here. Yay! Working my way through the cherry wine. Mm -hmm. So, finding some cool indie games. Now, so some time ago I did a review for you guys of the very first role-playing game, Braunstein. There's been some games which have used Braunstein as a jumping off point. The very, very interesting work. Now, there's one called Pits and Perils. I like it. I like it. The idea is to create a game that looks like the kind of original role-playing games that were being made in the 70s. Now, often these were like someone that had a cool idea. They had something they wanted to run for their friends. So they're kind of typing this out in the basement and trying to get this thing done as a kind of rule book that could be shared around, you know, <laughs> send them a stamped self-addressed envelope and they'll send it to you. So, first thing I like about this is <laughs> it's laid out as if it's been typewritten on a mechanical typewriter, a slightly hazy type um, font. Um, yeah, well done. It's all illustrated largely by um, old um, engravings of, you know, trolls and animals and things from, you know, medieval engravings. So, yeah, great. But the idea has been essentially what if a general medieval fantasy dungeoneering style game had not effectively been the Dungeons and Dragons D20 lots of numbers kind of route, but what if it had come from Brownstein roots where there was some resource management built in, um, didn't use the fancy dice, you know, remained with kind of 2D6 and you know, stayed in that vein. That's what Pits and Perils is. Pits and Perils is well served. It's got um, some good supplements that kind of bring in lots of extra rules, and it's got um, a ton of adventures for it. It's good work. Attend. Um, so, w first thing I like is characteristics. Um, you don't have them. You don't have this array of different characteristics. Now, remember, original D&D, you've got an array of characteristics, which mean absolutely bugger all. You'd sit there, oh, I wish I was an 18 strength fighter. Why? What? In original D&D, all it gets you is an experience point bonus. You don't hit more readily or do more damage or anything. You didn't, there wasn't even a, a system in there for checking against a characteristic. My guy's really dexterous. Really? Well, how do you walk across a tightrope or, um, you know, mm, climb that wall? There, there weren't any rules for it. So they were kind of a meaningless addition. Later on, we came up with rules for this. This game, you start off rolling for an attribute. Everyone gets an attribute and you roll. Um, or you could choose if you wish. But these are things, essentially, that your character is kind of renowned for. Your character could be um, strong and powerful. And this is good. Your guy's really good at lifting bars, bending gates, um, punching people on the nose. Um, feats of strength. You could be agile. You could be wise. You, um, you could be charismatic. Um, you see what your what the shtick for your character is, essentially. That is your characteristic. That's what you need to know. And it's an adventure as a competent pretty much in everything else. You can do whatever a competent adult could do in, in all other things. This thing you, your, you shine in. So everyone's got the one thing they shine in. You can choose um, now a class. They have, um, they've kept that kind of old school thing where there are kind of races as a class, kind of. You can be clerics, you can be magicians, you can be fighters, you can be thieves and rogues and this sort of thing. Um, you can be an elf. The elves can then choose whether they're going to be an elven warrior or an elven sorcerer. Um, you can be dwarves, um, all that sort of stuff. You can, you can choose all these. Um, there is a list of advancement for each class. Now, you will have um, hit points which will go up uh, with your limb. Um, the ones that can use magic will have either like Faith points or sorcery points, which are spent to expend magic. Now, those people who can do magic, there is a list of spells, and you start off knowing only about three spells, I think. But you can pick any of the spells from the list. It's just that 
as you get higher in experience level some of the spells do more for you they've got a longer endurance better range or if they do damage they do more damage um but you know pick it from the list uh roll some money buy some equipment you're ready to play um quick simple easy love it um all the system runs off 2d6 uh, again you're kind of looking at um uh tasks are split on this nice chart for a general chart for doing a, a, a task it's either can it be done yes can it be done no or can it be done maybe if it's a maybe just roll a seven plus on two dice um give them a bonus if they've got a uh, a skill in it um for fighting um yep rolling two dice you're looking to i think get a nine um but um as you get higher skill in some classes it's easier to hit so a skilled fighter um has an easier time to hit the higher your dice roll the more damage you do um and that comes off the other guy's hit points now in combat here's a strange thing so what they do is they say the opponents do not roll to hit you the opponents just have dice rolls that are the damage they give out this is for monsters and things so you are fighting a swarm of giant rats the swarm of giant rats it will have x number of hit points it'll say it dishes out a d6 points every turn however when its hit points get down to this level that will go down to a d3 and then finally it'll go down to like a d2 minus one or something for the last couple of hit points because it's a swarm of rats and there's there's less of them or you know, you're fighting a an ogre he will do like a d10 every turn this damage is damage you just do take um, from the monsters the monsters are therefore you know kind of butch and whatever but you can split that damage up between the party however you like anyone that's in range and engaged in combat with that creature can share the damage between them so if you've got a heavily armored fighter with a you know plate armor and a sword the armor and the sword um and the shield and everything they will take hit points damage before it gets through onto your own hit points so you can kind of all right you've taken four hit points well i've got five on my armor and two on my shield so yeah i'll take four of it off the armor ding so um i'll just absorb it all and if you're a butch fighter and you've got um you know 14 hit points and your magician friends only got about uh, nine this is all right well um, I'll, I'll, I'll take some damage and I'll, I'll 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 take two thirds of it and one third will go to him so you know an, a strange and interesting system you do kind of heal damage back at the end of a combat and um not all of it but you know you've got healing actions that you can do and obviously healers can do their thing um but yeah so that's a, it's a simpler combat system than the endless bash 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 of like D, &D. um there's a advanced kind of combat system you can use if you want where there's sort of more damage is dealt out if you want it to be you know quicker and brisker uh, i think as written it works fine so pretty much there we have it um combat systems um a task resolution system character sticks character advancement spells it's all in there they've got a lovely sort of series of different um you know magical items to find a huge list of all these uh, lovely monsters you know the game's got its own feel to it but it the idea is it's come from that inspiration that they had in the 70s so the similarities with original DD are there because it's come from the same wellspring they've limited what they drew from very very well but um as i said they've got some supplements that come with this and those supplements do things like bring in other classes um, bring in more monsters bring in more magic and bring in um, additional and optional rules that you may or may not wish to use um, and then a whole slew of adventures there's a whole campaign that they've done like about five linked adventures there's a starting adventure um, so the whole thing gives you effectively 
a fantasy game that runs on a 2d6 mechanic rather than using all these different geometrical dice shapes um gives you this quite simple character design system so that each character's definitely got a shtick to it and they're each going to have a fairly unique feel to them you can be the charismatic fighter uh, you could be a wise fighter um, you could be a strong and powerful fighter you could be an agile fighter um, and you can write your own extra narrative on top of that as to how you got there and what you were doing so yeah an interesting an interesting look at like kind of a different route if brownstein had been had gone on to become rolled over into a fantasy game whereas it actually kind of stayed with a um, a whole essentially kind of napoleonic -y kind of feel for it you know that's where brownstein went but now you know now we've got some pits and perils an interesting effort a really interesting effort uh i've played it um thoroughly playable uh, very quick to do um characters in obviously uh it felt good it had all the charm that playing old school D, &D has but i think it had more grip to it because um a lot of the things you generate for those characters in original D, D have no meaning they have no effect on the game whereas this gave you some stuff that had an effect in the game from word go um, so uh, I like it, Pits and Perils. If you wanted to try running an old school campaign for um, uh, a fantasy, go down the dungeons, bash things up, explore the wilds, go from hex to hex through the wilderness, go through that haunted house, explore those strange spooky islands, do mighty voyages, this is a pretty good choice. Um, it's um, The characters aren't as immediately mortal as they are in early DD. a single hit will kill you in original D, &D. um this you're you're more likely unless you pick fights with things that you know throw a lot of damage out keep the party together so that you can um, split damage between yourselves um it gives a really good game well worth looking at it um go and find it it's only a couple of bucks on drive through but it might actually um might actually trigger you off it might actually be something that makes you really want to play it uh, i i did i looked at it and it's like yeah i could immediately see this gets you playing and it has that charm and that sort of that sense of kind of mystery the wandering down corridors in your rusty suit of plate armor or you know I'm, I'm walking through a wilderness which is all kind of it's empty and wild and there's some ruins over there and you know it had that kind of mystique and innocence that old school games have without them endless lists of numbers and superpowers and power spirals and you know, you've got you've got limited resources use them well and it's what you what you say the character is doing is far more important than any numbers on a page check it out it's really worth taking a look at anyway if you've enjoyed the reviews by all means um tell people about them um hit the subscribe button hit the like button find my patreon uh yep spread the word keep gaming i'll keep looking for cool indie stuff and so on to um uh, yeah fill you in on all the really interesting work that's being done out there cheers everybody keep gaming bye